Hello, Doug. <laughs> this Hi, is everyone. Zach. Zach, please tell us. Zach is a is the funniest person in automotive youth journalism. This is the only thing I know about you. Tell us more about you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no pressure. Uh, start start to comed as Brian Regan, <laughs> Brian Regan once see? said. <laughs> see, do Shout you see Regan. my point? Okay, go ahead. Oh yeah, the pressure will continue. Um, I don't, really, I'm Zach Clapman, uh, co-host of the Smoking Tire podcast. Yep, done some other things for you guys, done some. Fun videos with modified cars for cars and bids. True. Produced television that is no longer because the streaming <laughs> lords have clearly won. <laughs> and uh, yeah, that's why I'm in the basement. And today, Zach has driven here from Los Angeles, where we are not located. That's, we did that whole thing yesterday, or last week. Okay. Someone asked We're, about LA, and I had to explain I don't live there. Uh, today, Zach has driven in today in? Uh, 2002... BMW M3. 2002 BMW M3. M3. Mm-hmm. With an SMG conversion from a manual to SMG. Correct. Yeah. And <laughs> I'm hoping to get a Tiptronic put in it soon. When I, I need to make big money and then I can get that custom work done. And I just, that, or maybe like a three speed automatic power glide. Well, you, I hear it's really strong. You know, it's also, since it's a slick top, you should probably cut a hole for a sunroof. And put I should add a sunroof, there. like yeah. right. Bill Margera style. Yeah. Just, yeah. That's exactly right. right. That's exactly Which, right. by the way, is not as insane as it sounds. I just reviewed a Montero that had a aftermarket sun. People did this in the 90s. This was like not uncommon. When I sold Saturns, yes, I sold Saturns. Did you know that? Wow. Hell yeah. We had an Astra. They didn't sell the Astra in the United States with a sunroof. We had an Astra on the lot with a sunroof. Aftermarket. A guy yeah. comes by the dealer with a saw. I'm not exaggerating any of no, this. <laughs> I, I'm aware of this. I think, I think. Did he come by with a saw and offer the service? Like those guys that, you, that they'll find you in a parking lot and they'll go, hey, man, I can, I fix, can fix those dents fix that dent. for 50 bucks. <laughs> I, I think that is pretty much exactly what happened. But he had a reputation. People knew that he was the sunroof guy. Okay. And so he popped by and he did the Astra. And so that, that was the Astra with the sunroof. So if you wanted an Astra with the sunroof, we had the one. One of one. And then it sat on the lot for 18, 24 months after that. <laughs> like all the Astras did. did it, was it sealed well? Was the headliner fit well? It, it worked great. Whoa. It was, just, uh, it was just an Astra. I'm genuinely impressed because you remember when the, the fifth gen Camaro came out? There was a company that brought a car to SEMA that said um, that was uh, first convertible, convertible Camaro available. And it was like, they make the kit, and that's what they do. Right. But the way the, the convertible tucked against the back was very lumpy, and it didn't have, like, a tonneau cover on it. So anyone who waited for the actual OEM would have done smart. better. Yeah. The Beetle was the same. They had a um, – someone did a convertible con- – because the Beetle came out in 98, and they didn't do a convertible until at least, like, 01 or 02. But there was conversions. And they, I mean, it was like the car plus 25 grand. Or, and then the convertible came out OE, and it was like three grand more. <laughs> I was like, well, I guess I shouldn't have done that. But that Saturn Astra is still one of one, right? Yeah, but it's probably been destroyed by now. Let's be honest. <clears throat> Bear Jackson, 500 grand. Kenan, how are you doing today? Pretty great. I have to say, I just finished moving. I used my M5 to move a lot of stuff recently. And it, it further emphasized to me, I talked about it last week too. I just love that car so much. It can do everything I need it to do. I can put all my stuff in it. I can go really fast. I can be very comfortable. Listen to my jazz, like I mentioned last week. Listen to my jazz. I, ju- I just love that car. I got in. He, he borrowed a pickup truck that I had and, and exactly. this weekend. That's exactly right. <laughs> and he borrowed a pickup truck price car that I had, and I get back in, and it's on channel 36 jazz. XM. It was on watercolors. Yeah, love watercolors. And I'm like, Shout out to okay. XM watercolors. I don't know. I'm like, jazz Kenan. is nice sometimes. I'm like, Kenan, you're just so deeply Kenan. I, I may or may not have done that on purpose. He's got to stand know. on his desk to display his watch so that he can look at it no, while he it's so works. I'm right-handed, and I wear my watch on my right hand because it's just more so comfortable. So do I. Yeah, so it's yeah. more comfortable. But, you know, when you rest your palms on your computer, it's like yeah, it I don't just care. scratches the hell out of the watch. But do you eye. need a stand so that you can look at it? That, no, no, I just put it there so it's like... So that you can look at it. I don't want to side either because it But I have a question. Here. If you were... If you were it on your left hand, wouldn't it still scratch the computer? It was still, yeah. You regard, type with both I take hands? it off regardless. Yes, I take it. I just want it off. I think okay. When I'm when I'm typing on my computer, so it doesn't mess up my. I don't know. That's, that's that's the level of specificity I you know exist in. <laughs> what but are you more protective over, your watch band or the M5? Uh, it depends on the watch. Well, it sounds like um, you loaded moving materials into your M5. Yes, but now you that's take that the I watch had, off and you rest your hand on things. I had, <laughs> I had blankets to protect everything, and like if it oh, okay. was close to the leather, I would cover it. So if it moved at all, it wouldn't mar the leather. Zach, I'm going to blow your mind with a couple of 
auctions that I'd like to discuss. Okay. I'm literally going to blow your mind. Can you pull up that Quattroporte? <laughs> oh, yes. It'll come up on this screen. It's going to be great. You don't have to do anything. You're you talking can about just this sit one. Here. You'll be caught up. Okay, take okay. a look at this. Oh, boy. It's gone. But imagine. <laughs> <laughs> but imagine a maroon Quattroporte followed by... A can someone press OK? No. OK. There we go. There it is. It's down there. there that is. car. I don't know if you could see the price. Uh, that car sold for 7,850 US dollars. What? Yeah. 7,850 US dollars. It runs and US drives? Yeah. Whoa. And I don't think, yeah, no accidents either. Oh my God. And it, it had 76,000 miles. But like that, I can't believe that either. What was the MSRP on this car originally? Why? Well, like, it got to be 120 or something. That is the great kind of Can bad you guys idea. pull that back? Well, not to mention, oh my God. The Quattro Porte? It's un. Look at this. And it looks like this is it the level we're at. Decent. These things are now selling for eight grand. Ninety-five thousand dollars. I mean, I understand that, like, because this is an 05, so that would not that would be the bad. Yeah, it's the correct. one. I mean, it's the transmission is the duo select that people didn't want, and blah blah blah. Probably has, if everybody's worried about reliability, blah blah blah. Nonetheless, but it sounds but nonetheless amazing. Right. Yeah. yeah, it's an amazing sounding car. I, and, and I know there's issues, and I know it probably has a bunch of them, but the point is, th we're at that point in the depreciation curve of this vehicle. Seventy-eight fifty. Now, do you subscribe to the thing that there are no bad cars now because most things are fairly reliable? I do, but not not at that era. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Today, yeah. Okay, a valid. Because when I, when I was in high school, I remember I was shopping for cars and there was an XJS V12 for sale for like $3,000. Right. And I went, ooh, V12 Jaguar. And my dad, who knows nothing about cars, knew enough to say, <laughs> no, no. no. <laughs> yeah, it, will, it will break. Yeah. You, gotta you can't fix that, it. That Quattroporte, we were talking, it's an 05 with like 80,000 miles. I think a Honda Accord, an 05 Honda Accord with 80,000 miles probably sells for more than that. Than seventy eight fifty. Well, one's a depreciating asset, and one is <laughs> and one, well, one is something you could actually use on a. Free, but the point remains, but seventy eight fifty for a that's like an unbelievable thing. Maserati Quattro Port. That, that was one hundred and fifty thousand dollars new if you adjust for inflation. Back in, that's crazy. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Kenneth, I want you to pull up another car. Okay. We just sold a two thousand nineteen Tesla Model Three Performance. Do you know what these are now going for? No. Remember, they do zero to sixty in like two point nine seconds yeah. or some unbelievable number. You see this one. The last Model 3 performance we sold, night or last 19. Do you have it up? Mm -hmm. I can't see your screen. That, twenty nine two ninety nine. Jeez, the performance per dollar available, especially unbelievable. With those. And I realize that it's not like the coolest, but like, but like you. I, I've learned though that the way they feel very. I mean, this is true for all cars. But I rode in an Uber that was a Model Three, and I thought that the shocks were filled with concrete. Like there was, <laughs> my car has KW Club Sports. They're they're good on the track. They're good for drifting, but they're very stiff. This Model Three felt much worse. And someone said, "Oh, well, it might just be really beat. The suspension could be just dead. So it, you got to make sure that you're getting a good one." Right. And uh, next up, the uh, Tesla Model Three. No, I'm kidding. Yeah, um, nice, nice. No, but I to <laughs> but totally. And 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 that. A lot of these cars were kind of used in a way that they were used. You well, know? They used as cars. Used as cars. Yeah. Or Ubers. Or, yeah. And, and, and especially performance, somebody probably did 87 launch starts, <laughs> you know? Yeah. But like 29 grand. That car. That's amazing. I, that car has 450 horsepower. And they did do, didn't they do 0 to 60 in like three seconds or something like that? I think, and if it's well cared for, because uh, so. that car new now, even with all the weird discounts, I think it's like in the 40s. Yeah, right? which is still a kind of a bargain. It is. So if you can get that for $15,000 off, it's going to feel the same. Well, this one, right. also, I mean, this one was like well equipped too. It also had you know, full self-driving capability and all that stuff like it. Full self-driving. I, I just more importantly cannot believe, we're finally getting into a situation after an enormously insane couple of years in the car business where cars are starting to depreciate again and I'm seeing some deals show up again. We were talking about Panameras on this last week yeah. and it's how like good early Panameras are under 20 and wow. it's like, yeah, like turbos, 500 horsepower cars and it's like, okay, finally cars are starting to get into like a reasonable, you know. Imagine if you were, if you're a, like a high school student, you have a, you've had a job for three years and you save diligently, right. you could buy yourself a Panamera Turbo. A Panamera Turbo. Imagine Whoa. how baller that would be. Yeah. 
<laughs> that would be incredible. I'd want to be I friends also, with that kid. Unlike the Quattroporte, and I, I don't know about the Tesla, I, I always hear from people who own them that these Panameras are relatively reliable, even long term. The, the PDKs are pretty robust, and yep. they like hold up pretty well. I rented yeah. one on Turo a couple of like last month, an older one, and drove it around like 500 miles, and it was totally fine. Drove great, and it was probably a thirty-three thousand dollar car. Except for the That's oil, so there is an oil thing with that car. Remember well, so. okay, here, here's an unbelievable thing. I'm gonna I'm gonna remind. <laughs> The Panamera Hybrid, e-hybrid, in like eighteen nineteen or something, mm -hmm. used the Audi S4's V6 with a hybrid component to it. And the Audi S4 has a dipstick. Mm -hmm. The Panamera, it's electronically red. Oh, right. But there's a spot where the dipstick could be. So if you go to an Audi dealer and just buy a dipstick, you can put it in and read your oil. Really? <laughs> so they didn't, they didn't fill the hole? They filled it with a little plug, like a plastic plug. Oh, okay. But if you take the plastic plug out, but the result is the Panameras, you can only read the oil electronically. But if you simply buy this $9 Audi part, <laughs> you then have a manual dipstick. And the oil gauge is problematic. <laughs> and so it's such an easy fix. If you put the dipstick in, does that throw the oil gauge off? Maybe, but the oil gauge is essentially unusable in those cars, or okay. at least it became that way. And I Googled it and a lot of other people have similar issues, it sounds like. I, I've, I've heard that the electric dipstick is problematic. It's just stupid. What's it's the just, point? That's like know. the one thing where I'm like not into well, it's the just, progress. It's an, yeah, it's an innovation I don't feel that we really needed. Yeah. You know? Right. If you can't check your own oil. You know, with a dipstick. Dip I'm not saying you got to get under the car. Right, yeah. It's not just exactly a Just stick a thing in a thing situation. and use a paper towel. <laughs> it's the old fuel gauge. You just put a stick in. Right. Like Model Ts. That's what you do. Right. I remember. Because you remember you did that that the movie with adventure, that yeah. and yeah. All Cars Go to Heaven 2. Right. right. Watched it. Loved it. Um, should we talk about these cars that are coming up for auction? By the way, you can write in and uh, ask us questions. It's somehow, and yes. they're delivered to us somehow. They appear on a screen here. Are these questions from today already? Yes, these are questions from People today. People are already right. doing these? Yeah. This is unbelievable. There's so many questions. Do you want to start out with some questions? Yeah, Zach, why don't you ask, okay. answer this? Well, Zach, what's next after the M3? You've had this M3 for, for a long time. I've had it for six years and 50,000 miles. Yeah. Um, what's next? The answer of what after it is going to be something practical. It's going to be like a Volt. It's not exciting. Why would you do that? Well, because I want both at the same time. Oh, got it. In addition. After that. You had a Crown Victoria. Oh, yes. But nothing is more exciting than that. So it's all downhill. <laughs> That's why I go to get the Volt. Life is over. <laughs> I peaked. You know, I was a childhood actor what with happened? the Crown Vic. And now I'm going to work at Staples. Well, you could go get another <laughs> Crown Victoria. I've owned two. <laughs> one was lifted. One was normal detective spec. I love them so much. Um, but they are so big and hard to turn and un, uh, just hard to live with if you don't have a large parking area like yourself that, I don't know, it was time to move on. Right, right. And so now you daily this. You only use this M3. Yeah, which is expensive because they break. <laughs> right. Have you had all the issues? Rod um, bearings? Vanos? I haven't had those. I think they were done before. When I bought the car, I like the first week I brought it to a shop and I, I got... Um, the whole subframe reinforcement kit from Turner. Nice. They, the shop welded all those on. They did the upgraded radiator. They did the cooling system. The two things that are known for failing besides the rod bearings were done right away. And I have since never had a problem with the subframe or with overheating. And I've okay, driven so, it so we, we've spent that's an enormous amount of money fixing those two things, correct. and they are, in fact, fixed. That is the car, that's the car guy lifestyle, car person lifestyle. Well, it's especially the BMW M car lifestyle, because yes. a lot of the, the yeah, customers yeah. were doing the test driving for a lot of these vehicles. <laughs> <laughs> That's Fine. not unfair. Dude, the forums, if you find forum posts from 05, 06, because mine had a weird idle thing, and I went, oh, what's going on? So I searched this, and, and the result pops up, and it was 2006. I thought, when it was new. When it was new! And, it, and people were like, uh, does anybody else's have a rolling <laughs> idle when it's warm, wow. and the car's new? And I went, oh, these are just flawed from the get-go. Yeah. But they're, but they're so good. Like things. the V10s. That's they are, but the thing is, like, yes, they are flawed, but then there, there are solutions for them, and once those are done... They're also, now, Once I know you're going to say, done, other that's what everybody break. says. And it's, it's, but you it know, is Toyota, Toyota they, just, they just do put those solutions in <laughs> right there in the factory. Yeah. <laughs> they just are like, all right, here's what we're going to do. Yeah. <laughs> like the window regulator on this broke, which is a thing they do, which is what everyone says to justify a car they like that is actually terrible. <laughs> Toyota window regulators don't break. Right. Honda ones don't break. Right. My so Crown Vic have... regulator never broke. That car had like 150,000 miles on it. Damn right. So Crown Vic. That's true. But Germany's like, we have a new way <laughs> well, yeah. to make the window go up and down. Right. 
really breakthrough. Um, <laughs> it but goes they are, sideways the thing also. Is, it is a cool car. I know, That's, and it's, it's still it's cool. You, and it's yeah, getting cooler. Exactly. If if a Toyota like that had problems, you'd be very upset about it because it's not supposed to. But a BMW kind of you just kind of deal with them because the rest of the car is so cool. Yeah. But you know. Anyway, um, more okay. questions. Okay, another question. Uh, okay, how about how about Burke? Asks, would you buy an M car? No, I think we've covered that. <laughs> um, <laughs> Some of us have, and one of us. Samid won't. says, what car would you recommend for someone fresh out of college in New Jersey? Apparently, that's relevant. Budget twenty twenty five grand. I think Panamera Turbo. We've already covered this. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> Zach, Dude, you'd be the king of Jersey. <laughs> you'd be the king of New Jersey. You got to do w- rims, but uh, I mean, just out of college. Realistically, I'd want something with ground clearance because a lot of the roads there are terrible. Mm-hmm. But some of the driving roads are nice. Um, I don't know, Subaru. Like, either used STI or Crosstrek, if you want to go newer. Boring. Boring, functional. No. Okay. No. So you think Samid wants functional and boring? Then get a uh, Pajero. Get a Mitsubishi Pajero, <laughs> two-door. It's got the G, G46, G4G63 in it. There. <laughs> you happy? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah happy they're already. rad. <laughs> they're awesome. <laughs> Kenner, what do you got? Give um, Samid something good other than either... <laughs> Either a Pajero or a Subaru Crosstrek. 2025K. Um, let's see. What are... No, those, that's, For 20 grand, 20 there's grand. so many... I can think of... Yeah, Maserati. Think of cars that Get three of them. <laughs> Get three Quattroportes. <laughs> and when they break, you just throw it in the recycling bin and you drive the next one. <laughs> Dude, that's, <laughs> what, that's what it's like to buy a new car and have depreciation. Like, what's the difference, really? That's so Just true. The, the only difference is the physical amount of space that the Quattroportes would take up. <laughs> that, it's the same. It's the garden state. Park it in the garden. <laughs> what is a twenty to twenty-five grand car that we all could agree on here? What about like a forerunner? I was going sure. to say, nice say you want something nicer and like a little nicer. It's still going to be relatively reliable. There are a lot of um, all-wheel drive uh, XI like five series. You can get F10 five series in that price range. All right, Ken, I'm going like to I'm going to challenge you here. I want you to name a non BMW. Not even for some meat. Just name a non BMW. <laughs> In that price range, or no, just in general? just overall. I don't think I can manage that. No, okay, give me the. Uh, you're 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 right. F10 or an is X, actually an pretty X5 good. X5 actually would be a pretty good choice. Can it? Can it? It's just. Can it? Give me a Lincoln. Twenty five grand. No. What? A nice MKT town car. <laughs> town MKT. car. Yeah, town that car is actually very comfortable. And they're good. MKT. They're heinous. They are. They look like the baleen whale thing in the front. It's right. Like the humpback whale, but and the funeral car, and it's not a good situation. But they yeah. made it with an EcoBoost that has like four thousand horsepower. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. unbelievable. You can tune it up a bit. They made about. A, <laughs> you can tune up your MKT. You could, and you could go do do sleeper drags in Jersey. That I'm sure that happens. All right, Kenan, I quiz time. What is a Lincoln MKT? Just give us an idea of what you think it might be. Isn't the MKT like the isn't it the like weird looking hatchback thing or like the, the Zach? Thing? Here's the thing about Kenan. Kenan's not, Kenan has an unbelievable knowledge of performance cars and like the high like Ferraris, BMWs, Porsches, etc. But like if you go below that, mm. he's like Honda Core. I don't, I don't, I don't concern myself with such things. Try <laughs> to describe it in X5 terms. <laughs> It is also an SUV, isn't it? Yes. Yeah, it yeah. was the Ford Flex. It was Lincoln's version of the Ford Flex, but it was yeah. uglier. Well, yes. I remember. I mem- I do remember seeing those in my hometown. That and the Ford um, Flexes. He's MKX, from MKX. The MKX wasn't that the also the the MKX was based on the Edge. It was midsize. Yeah, they call yeah. it the Nautilus now for some reason. Because it goes underwater. This is this is all very scintillating, but perhaps we should move on to discussing some <laughs> yeah, of these auctions. Another question, but no, no. Let's do auctions. Let's do auctions because we have okay. a very cool car up. Can we pull up this M3? Of course. And this Aristo. Do you know about Ooh. these Aristos? Uh, I didn't. I had to read up on them. Do you know what uses a 2JZ? I know that now. The turbo I mean, one. I mean, yes. Go to this. This is the yeah, turbo the 2JZ. One. It is. It's a twin turbo. Like the Supra. But the look at it. It just, looks like a, it just looks like a Lexus GS300. It's the, it's the good one that we never got. Although you can find GS300s in America that have 2Js, but they've been swapped. So what's cool about this. The tu- legit, turbo 2Js. Because the, the regular GS300 came with the 2J, but right, it's not the, the good turbo. one. Yeah. This is good because it was not done by a guy. It was done by the Toyota Corporation. Toyota. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. And, but, but the downside is that this has the five-speed. It doesn't get the good six-speed from the Supra. This has a five-speed. It's an auto, isn't it? No, you can get it with Manuel. Well, this particular this one, one has a four-speed auto. Okay, well. But you could swap it. You and me could knock that out in an afternoon. Totally. Yeah, and Kenan could put in a BMW transmission. That's true. You could take it from my car. <laughs> um, I yeah. do think these are really... This is cool. I mean, this is a rad sleeper sedan... 
not quite an M5. It doesn't handle as well. They feel kind of heavy. I mean, the GSs that I've driven do, but with that power, I mean, that's just a good time. Like you can put four people in it, and, and it's scare a tu- incredibly tunable, and you li- really could do a stick swap. The thing that I think is cool is it's about to sell for eleven grand, uh, and it's a pretty cool car with a two Jay Z. I mean, and a Mark IV I mean, Supra with this motor is uh, a ten X this yeah. price point. Yeah, you could do some stuff with it. We could tune it on up. You could buy this for eleven and then sell it to Hurt for like fifteen because right. he keeps breaking his GS. It's right. all built. Um, can cool. we go to the M3? I want to talk about this because it's such a great car. Yeah, absolutely. Kenan, please tell us about this, this 2018 BMW M3, the competition pack. So, the, so I, one of the things about the F80 generation M3 I like is a lot of them are ordered in individual colors. Um, so BMW individual is their custom, uh, custom part of right. BMW that will do unusual colors. This one was ordered in Imola Red, which is one of my favorite reds. E39 M5 yep. was offered in that color. E46 M3 was Oh, too. that was the E39 M5 red? That was is the that E39 the E38 red? red? Uh, yes, E38 uh-huh. was also that color. That's correct. Yeah, the early 2000s red, which looks really great. Um, but this car, it comes with some some nice equipment, relatively low mileage, 29,100 miles. It's got the DCT um, as opposed to a manual, but it, it, uh, these cars are just are just such excellent buys. I yeah. know you're not the biggest fan of how they drive, um, but I think like for the money now and the sizing, um, I, I, I like them a lot. I, I think they're one of the better looking M3s too. Zach, tell us about your M3 thoughts compared to your M3, your F80 thoughts compared to your M3. I think that um, this was my f- this is my favorite generation besides the 46. I think wow. this is the I wow. think this is the best looking, let's say modern M3. Like you could yeah. see where they're going design wise. We know we we all know we've all complained enough about the new ones, but Love I think this just is Love a those great key. looking car. The engine is super powerful. It looks modern inside, but it's not just a wall of screens. The yeah. only thing is these rode a bit stiff. Like they're a little snappy and a bit stiff. But I think this is a, I think this was kind of the last gas before things got super digital. Yeah, and, you know. Can go back to the forty nine two fifty. I don't really know what these things go for anymore. <laughs> um, I used to do all the reserve setting for this business, and Whoa. I don't do that anymore. It was a lot. It's a lot. We have four people who do it now. I feel better about when you come on our podcast and you talk about prices and you just know everything front, back, <laughs> and sideways, and I always feel really bad. Now I don't. <laughs> <laughs> well, now I lost all that. Yep. But forty nine five. this thing's going to sell for you, 50 Now you don't even whatever. know what an MKT is. You're having him explain it. Right. Badly. Um, what do you feel about these? You said you don't like the way they drive? I just like the, I like your, I like the analog. And, and the, to me, each successive generation has gone away from analog a bit more, and yeah. I love the new one. I think True. the new one is amazing. Oh, interesting. I don't mind the grill. Okay. Well, I, actually, yeah, it's, it's despite my love of BMWs of our generation, like, I, I tend to really like the, I, I like the new one. The I think grill is going to be like the wing on those, on those Superbirds. It's going to be like, oh, it was so ugly. And then in 30 years, people will be like, oh. Cool. No, no. Yes. No. Yes. No. Yes. I don't think so. Because I think I'll bet you five dollars, not accounting for the inflation, that I would win the bet for in thirty years. <laughs> okay. I'll okay. take the bet. Because we, what we need to do is find someone that was alive and remembers when the Superbird came out, and and ask them how did you feel when you first saw this, and if they say we thought it was cool, then you're wrong. But if they say we thought this <laughs> okay, was the dumbest thing in the world, okay. But there are other cars. There are other cars. The, the slant nose, right? Nobody bought that. It was questionable. It didn't sure. have the round headlights. And now everybody's like, oh, my God. Well, I, st- I still feel I like I got a flak bow. <laughs> <I don't. laughs> they just look fast. I think the slant nose <laughs> just do. looks fast. But in the period, people were, like, not sure about it. It was an expensive option, but it yeah. was also kind of, like, a questionable one. Do they still not command as much money as? No, they get, bring, they get crazy money. Oh, all right. They get the kind of money that Kenan spends on his M5 every year. Well, That's a lot. A lot. Yeah. <laughs> Carbon buildup, right? That's a big thing. <laughs> I'll help you drive it properly. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're now okay. at 50,500. Yes, this thing is going, going, going. Zach, please. These are just awesome sedans. Please enlighten so us good. on the yep. following thing because these people are bidding at the minimum increment. Okay. I want to hear your thoughts on how you would address a bidding situation. Would you like throw down a 53K bid here and just knock everybody out of the water? Or would you keep going minimum trying to wait them out? Well, it's at 5,500. I mean, I've heard from you. That you should take bigger swings to scare people away. Yeah. Makes yep. sense psychologically. If, if, if someone else is like, oh, okay, I can do another hundred, another hundred. And if they see four grand come in, then right. they're afraid and they're backing off. Who am I fighting against? So for, now for me, if you don't have unlimited funds, you're also playing a bluffing game. So <laughs> I can throw in on that $4,000 more. And man, do I hope that someone doesn't have five. Right. 
It's an interesting, it's a really interesting observation of humans. Of right. Like, ooh, which one's going to win? Right. Who's pushing their limit more? I don't right. know. Because so far the last bunch, it's all been $250 increments. But Which I think now we mandate a $500 increment over 50 grand, which is why it's switched, switched to 500. Yeah. So but um, 80 grand new. I mean, it has the compact, like, it's got a lot of stuff on they it. Are, they're relatively reliable. They have one big problem, which is the crank hub thing. Um, but that they're... The what thing? The crank hub on the front of the engine, it's two separate parts. No. So that, the oil chain, the oil, uh, my understanding is the oil pump chain is attached to one, the timing is related to the other. They can shift places, and when that happens, the timing goes out, whack the pistons. That's the, the story valves. of Freaky Friday. That's that script. <laughs> yep, so there are, there, are, what are, there are what are called keyed crank hubs, <laughs> which, uh, which lock together as one component, and then you don't have that issue anymore. It's about, oh. I think it's usually about $5,000 to fix. Imagine if Kenan had this knowledge just generally about cars, but he only has BMW. Well, I only or about anything. On cars you like could solve so many I'm, I'm problems in the Mideast. I'm buy cool stuff, and I don't have Kenan. I got to like go on forums. If I had Kenan who could just sit here and be like, hey, dude, here's what you want to look out for on the Countach, that would be great. But instead, he knows about the crank hub on the F80. Sold, by the way, for $51,000. Boom. Boom. That's a lot it's a great, of car. That's a great car. Really so maybe fast. throwing down the $53,000 bid, like I suggested, wouldn't have been the right play in this particular case. Maybe. I don't know. Uh, I always wonder about it. What is someone's, like, what is, what is the right tolerance and what is the right situation in which to do it? Um, and I'm a big fan of just, like, be aggressive. Yeah, I, or it's, yeah. It's know your number and then set aggressive bids. Because the problem it. is, here's the problem: if you don't do that and you keep going up by 500, someone will said that that mentally their stopping point was 50. Yes. At 50,500, they're like, eh, I'll right, just go one slip. more. Yeah. And then it's 51, and they're like, yeah, but I'm not going to lose it over 500 bucks. And the next thing you know, it's 63 grand, and they're still bidding. Whereas if you had just knocked in a 58 bid. One of my favorite moments, I, I, I used to produce a show called Drive on NBC Sports with Chris Harris and, and Mike Spinelli and, and Fair was on it and Musto and, uh, and Alex Roy. And Mike wanted to buy a new car. I'll try to make this story quick. I remember this. Car. You guys filmed this. I remember we watching filmed it. it. So we're in Alex Roy's apartment and there's a Jaguar, I think. Was it, it was XJ, a Jag, yeah. Yes. That was up online. And Mike, Mike's like, I have 12. It was at nine. <laughs> he's like, I can spend 12. And they're like, all right, it's only at nine. He goes in the bathroom. And literally, as he comes out, he goes, what's it at? And they go, 15, but we hit go for you. <laughs> and he's like, what? <laughs> and it was, you know, Harris, of course, the mischievous person he is, was just egging everything on. But it was, it was a great indicator of how Mike went, well, okay, well, okay. And now he's owned that car for six years. <laughs> <laughs> is that right? He has yeah. it? No way. That's yeah, he so ended up buying it, and he daily did, and he still has it. And it's beautiful. It's, a beautiful it's such a good-looking looking car. car. I remember when he I didn't it. know that. That's so funny. It's the little nudge, right? Right. And it feels little, and that's why you want to... <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of that, another good example. Pull up this moat, please. You know about these? I have so many questions about these. Okay, well, these will kill you if you get in an accident with them. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, I know but, that. Very dangerous. Like, if but you hit a you raccoon, you're dead. You don't drive it in a place where that might occur. No. You drive it around a beach community. Well, <laughs> do you know what these were originally pitched as? What? Military vehicles. <laughs> That's great. This is the, go back to that last picture. If you crash that, into. You can see the military riding around in that. Yeah. yeah. Well, funny enough, they, they were turned down because of the lack of ground clearance. Okay. And apparently there was a promo video that showed soldiers arriving at an obstacle and they got out and they all carried it <laughs> by the bumpers. <laughs> and they were like, they were like, here's a solution. They're like, no, it's not. <laughs> I just love that idea of like, oh, it's not a problem, it's a feature. These cars are so <laughs> cool. I, I am a little scared of them, but I think in, in, in little tiny situations where you're kind of controlled, like here in Coronado or mm -hmm. whatever, this is the coolest thing in the world. You're completely open to the world. Who needs a Jeep when you could drive around in this thing? It's fun. It's, it's, they got popular with, like, with tourism in tropical areas and things. Right. Is this, uh, I feel like this is the first Polaris slingshot. Oh, you know interesting. I mean? Or like the Vanderhall, like any yeah. of these things that are or just the, You know what else also was that Fiat 500 Jolly? Like in the oh, 50s, yeah. that was oh, a thing. That's true. So now, there's, now it's back and it's electric and it has a range of 40 miles, which is frankly all you'd really... I mean, if you're doing more than 40 miles in one go in this car, you're insane to begin you're with. You're in a police chase. <laughs> <laughs> At 25 miles per hour, max. 25, right. It's a max it's a 25 mile an hour speed. Chase. Wow. 17? Because these start at 20. Well, this one's like brand new. I have no idea what they oh, call Oh, okay. The MSRP is 23. It's in Huntington Station. Someone it's, in the uh, Hamptons is excitedly bidding on this car right now. I'm going to take it next summer. I'm going to take it out to, I'm gonna take it out to Sag Monday. Harbor. <laughs> this is going to be great. <laughs> <laughs> is it you bidding on this behind the seat? <laughs> I don't participate in that kind of thing. These, uh, yeah, 40 miles range. Um, Kenan, can you pull up another question for us? Of course. I see wheelbase as a Miata. 
Okay. All right. From go scroll down. I can't. This is there's a camera in front of the whole thing for me. Okay. We need that. All right. Here we go. Oh, this is going to be great. From <laughs> we need that camera. From drain what drains wallets fast. Zach, are you in a position where you've sorted and dialed the M3 to such an extent that you won't replace it for years because anything you'd actually want that would be better would be two to three x price? This dude owns an E46 M3. Yeah. There is no question about it. <laughs> and his and his partner's trying to tell him to sell it because of the money. And he's <laughs> right, like, he's like, watch, no, no. watch. <laughs> Let's see what Zach says. There's nothing better than that. And she's like, yes, there is. And he's like, I want to prove it to you. <laughs> um, actually, the answer is kind of yes. <laughs> 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 and here's here's why it, because it because it does this thing like it's pretty quick and you can fold the seats down and hold lots of things but also it gets 20 28 miles per gallon highway coming down here is that true that was true like i reset it i watched it the whole drive i'm like 28 miles per gallon so performance wise you know it's used camaro territory mustang gt territory right but i don't know those aren't as comfortable to drive on the road. They feel very big. Right. Interior materials feel, I mean, I guess newer car, but they feel cheap. But it's just, it has this weird Venn diagram where it does a lot of things well as long as you keep it alive, right. <laughs> which it doesn't want to be. Which, and you've done, you've spent money and time getting it to the point where it's, where it is. Yeah. Would you consider instead, this is going to be out there a little mm -hmm. bit, would you consider instead an NA Auto Mark IV Supra? No. Okay, what about an NA Auto Mark IV Supra? Oh, okay. All right, maybe. What color? Whatever color you want. Whatever color I want. <laughs> Can't be topaz blue. Uh, what is what is this car worth? That's a. I have no idea. 20, I bought it for fifteen. How many miles are on it? One hundred thirty-five thousand. Okay, that you could almost get into an NA Auto. Um, I could almost get into a four-speed automatic. <laughs> And what is the horsepower on that? It was 225. It was around there. Yeah, it was a little light. It was a little light compared to where you are, but it won't break. I feel like what you're pitching to me, not to bring it back, but same specs as the Crown Vic. <laughs> 225 <laughs> you horsepower. You can combine both Four things into one automatic. car. You can combine both things into one car. You get the reliability and the four-speed automaticness of the Crown Victoria, but you also get a coupe that is cool. That's true. It's, I, I saw your pitch to Ron Zaris on the show. Of, I, I literally watched that moment. And you do make a good case, genuinely. Like, because what's a, what's a turbo super now with a manual? Like, uh, 130. Yeah. So if all you want to do, if, drive if anyone super. out there is dreaming of a super, but you know in your heart that all you're going to do is drive to car shows and park it, and drive home, well, and you should a, get and around. Around. I would take it to Vons. I would take it to Vons and all this other stuff. Like that's, that's the cool thing about it. It hit me watching that later and reading the comments, which were very critical of me, that I didn't make my case that well. One thing I forgot to mention is the 2JZ is incredibly reliable. Uh, the non-turbo, yeah, yeah. even the turbo one, but the non-turbo non non-turbo, that motor is just really reliable. Of course. And also, um, you could just drive it. Imagine just cruising around in a Supra. But it's not the good one. You know it's not. <laughs> yeah, but other people don't. <laughs> this, is, this, is, this is like wearing a fake Rolex sort of thing. It's like... It, other, it's no, like, it's, it's not. It's be wearing a cheaper Rolex. But you still have a Rolex. <laughs> yeah, it kind of is. But yeah. you know you're just putting on a show for other people. And it's not No, genuine. I would enjoy... Okay, I want you to imagine I understand the, the price. You don't, you're not into these cars. But I want you no. to imagine the following. Honestly. Imagine First off, imagine a world in which you are. Close your eyes. Kevin. Close your eyes okay. and imagine this. We go to, together to Whole Foods. <laughs> For some okay. reason, we've gone to the grocery store. We park our NA Auto. Mm, uh -huh. We walk away from it and look back, and there we've driven to the store in a Mark IV Supra, an iconic automobile. You get the big wing or no wing? Yeah, we'd get a big wing and we'd get the turbo wheels. We'd probably get a turbo badge. Let's oh, honest. so you'd, okay, you just full, <laughs> full front. You're just really putting on the show. Yeah, I, really I mean, it's a good-looking car, and it would be reliable and comfortable and all those things. I get right. it. For, for, a, for a touring car that you don't need, when you don't need to go fast, it right. would actually make a lot of sense. Right. And, it's and it, honestly, it's kind of a cruiser. The Supra in general, to be frank. It's not the it's best handling bigger thing. bigger car, right. Yeah, you unless you put a lot of work into it. Right. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. I drove one in the canyons, and I was surprised at, like, oh, we lean a lot. Oh, <laughs> this is kind of heavy. 90s car. Yeah. But uh, nonetheless, you wouldn't give up your... Stick E46 M3 for an older, slower, automatic Toyota Supra that costs more. Is well, what you're you do kind make of a good case. <laughs> it costs more as well. No, I would not do that. Huh. Do people buy these and just modify those? I assume just like if you're I don't just know do who all buys it, NA like autos. I don't understand. I, I'm not sure. It must be people who are going to stick swap it and put in a turbo. Yeah, people that I mean, really know what they're doing. Like, like people like us that are really good with tools, they do that stuff. 
Right. You could still, well, even if you took it to a shop, you could still do all that stuff and it would be so much significantly less expensive than a turbo. A, a but less turbo. valuable. I mean, that's the thing. The yeah, benefit sure, but of if you want to drive it, who cares? Okay, this is interesting. So you're yes. saying I should get an NA Auto and turn it into a turbo. Well, since, yeah, I don't see why you wouldn't. Well, this is, this is the, what, provenance versus experience right. argument, right? Right. And like that's you interesting could one. make the experience feel exactly like a, a real one, right. but you will lose money. Right. I mean, I guess. But, but you, you will have the experience for half the, experience the price. Of, it's true. Yeah. So it's, uh, it's there's give and take. Your argument is not as dumb as it sounds. Like there, I, but I think there's like... Although I've never taken it to the level where you've just taken it. And it's quite an interesting place to be, isn't it? But you... I'm going to refine have, this for next week's show. You, you okay, have you a, ruminate. Refine. Like, kind of unique uh, interest in cars. Or, like, you get excited about cars that I think a lot of other people don't. And right. I'm not trying to criticize you. So for if, if what it is about... Ultimately, this hobby is enjoyment. If you would enjoy an NA Auto Supra, <laughs> well, I don't think we can't would. say that your choice is stupid. Right. I don't think anybody would really enjoy an NA Auto. <laughs> <You> would, I, <laughs> <laughs> I just, I can't drive a stick. I mean, it's too much money. To, you can't to, drive a stick? You'll learn. <laughs> learn someday. Will you teach me? A, You'll get there, I, will you teach me I'll show you this in this white car. <laughs> yeah. Okay, can we go to the next car here? We got a Land Rover. Yes. And Zach is a... Oh, by the way... Before that Moke sold. The Moke sold for 20350 Someone oh, had a $20,000... Max number, and, and uh, someone went a little higher. And also that Arista sold for 12 dollars 5 we We're getting a lot of sales today. Right. Can we talk Land Rover Discovery? Zach, yeah, please give I mean, us all of your thoughts on the Land Rover. The, this is a the Disco 2, first year of the Disco 2. I honestly know nothing about these. Okay. I know that Land Rover has the reputation of being unreliable, and then I've heard from Land Rover owners that that is unfounded depending on which one you have. This looks awesome. Yeah. It looks like the perfect Land Rover Discovery. Right. Yeah. The wheels look great and the tires look great. Color. And, you know, I, I don't know. A friend of mine has an LR3, and he said his V8 has been running flawlessly since he's owned it for, like, six years. Um, but I don't know. What do you know? I feel like you'll know about these. Uh, well, I know that it's the last car made with a Formula... This is like a BMW from England, by the way. The last road yes. car with a Formula One engine. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's true. Kenan, Kenan and I have, have gone back and forth on this topic. Argued many times. My career GT has a Formula One engine. Okay? Okay. Thank you. I appreciate that. Don't, don't, just, don't give in to him. He here. doesn't agree with that because it didn't no, race. It didn't race. It's a form, it was an engine that was developed to race in Formula One, but then didn't. Mm -hmm. And then it was going to be used for Le Mans racing and then wasn't. And they're yeah, like, so we have to words, do something This engine has with been used engine. in both F1 and Le Mans. I mean, that's Meanwhile, incredible. Meanwhile, the Ferrari F50's engine block was in an actual Formula One car. And those was, aren't worth anything now. And so. Right. And those aren't worth anything. Right. <laughs> so, like, so. He's his, over his here, boy, he he's over here like flexing engine, on me about a car that costs 4X. Okay, the point is this. The Land Rover Discovery's engine, we learned the other day, and it's actually oh. the Disco 1, which ended in 97, but the right. Discovery's engine was used, it was the Buick, well, old Buick V8, and some version of that was used in a 60s Formula 1 car. And so really... Like, wait, like the Aurora V8? Or no, it was some... Before that? Land Rover okay. used, until this car oh, came out, yes, yes. they okay. used this old like Buick V8 that had been truly in production since the 60s, Correct. and apparently at some point, some Formula 1 team also used that engine. And so... If he's over here trying to split hairs. I happen to have a Defender that has that powertrain, a 97 Defender, and boom, Formula One engine in my car. So I'm good either way. That is an amazing display of <laughs> transitive properties, and I am, <laughs> I am here for it. I really am. Wow. That was artful. <laughs> he, he brings it up to Formula genuinely One daily. He brought it up in our, our friend-like text thread today and like tagged me in it. It's, just, it's very annoying. <laughs> I love, by the way, I love my McLaren F1 coupe. Here because, <laughs> right. because, right. Right. because. Exactly. it's half of an S70-2. Boom. He has half of a McLaren F1 That's engine. right. Well, it's, that's that. great for him, but unfortunately, I have all of a Formula One engine. Okay, um, Kenan, please tell us your thoughts on the Land Rover Discovery. I, I really like Discos, personally. Um, I, uh, it, maybe it's my love of unreliable vehicles. Again, like they, they do have a reputation, but I think they look really cool. Uh, especially, like, Defenders are, you know, inordinately expensive. They, right. they, have, they really went up. They've come down a bit. But, like, I think these cars are, are significantly more usable and also very cool. You can make them look awesome like this yeah. one does and drive around in it. It's just, I mean, you know, I, I remember I was walking one morning on, um, on the East Coast, and I saw one just like pulling out of a driveway, and it just looks so right, right. in like New England. It just looks the just awesome. One thing we're noticing and that's surprising to me is discoveries are coming up in value. For years, this was a three thousand dollar Craigslist. I mean, no one wanted, right, right. but because there was so much attrition, I think, mm. like they left. look cool, yeah, and they're not as easy to find as they once were. And so, like 
people are starting to get into this like boxy off-road SUV kind of yeah. thing. Yeah, yeah we, here. we've done well with them um, <laughs> over over the years. I mean, we've we've sold a lot of them. Oh, this is all the discos, but I mean, you're seeing some of these sales are in the in the twenties, fourteen, fifteen. Wow. I mean, these were these were cheap, crappy cars that nobody wanted for like the, a legitimately long time. Now, were they still cheap even as the overlanding trend? exploded in popularity or they were, these the, were lagging? the cheap ones okay. of the overlanding trend and suddenly things have changed a little bit and now it's like hmm. do you think that's the, the, the because this is kind of what's left it's like monteros monteros were super cheap for a long time even yeah. as forerunners blew up but then everyone went well this is actually a really good car and right. it's still inexpensive it could be partially because of that but i think also it has to do, it, it just looks cool like go back up it just looks i mean this is a neat looking thing and the days of boxy suvs that can do anything off road are really starting to come to an end and yeah true it, monteros are hard to find foreigners are hard to find land cruisers are hard to find or expensive and so it's like all right kind of by default anyone that's still around i mean this is cool like the feeling you get when you drive the like king of the road driving position in this car that's is like yeah. neat and, and it's that, got like, perfect that, lift that rear glass i think is so that cool rear glass the with the safari window i, I, always, I remember being a kid though and seeing these and, and going what are people looking at up <laughs> out of the ceiling <laughs> like I saw remember Jurassic being a kid Park, and thinking, I guess. I remember being a kid and thinking, wow, you can look at stuff. <laughs> but I, it never hit me. I, I, wasn't as ref, I wasn't as intellectual as you. <laughs> I wasn't as intellectual as you. It never hit me that there's nothing to see. <laughs> Whoa, you could see something. You could see more of the tree above you than you can out the window that's next to you. Yeah, I just never, thought it was a funny idea. Really I was a Zach, about very that. deep thinker. On this <laughs> very <thing>. cynical. <laughs> Kenan, this is about to end. 13,600. Ooh, Ooh last another Dang last this. second bid. This is something that annoys us, Zach. People place last second bids. The and, then they, and then sometimes like their internet will go out. This happens like once every month. And they'll send us an email and be like, why didn't my bid go through? And we'll be like, because you put it in at the last 0, 0.0 seconds. Like, what are you doing? It's very yep. disappointing. It's a dangerous, to us. dangerous game to play. It is a dangerous game to play. If you want to win, it's a dangerous game to right. play. Right, and don't we all? Mm -hmm. But yeah, but your timer just resets, right? So what's the it does? But if you have some sort of connection issue or something, then you're screwed. Oh, and people right. complain, or they're doing it on their phone, which I seems insane to me. There was a time when bidding, <clears throat> like buying a car online, was insane, and now people are just buying cars on their phones, right? It's like what, what was it? Uh, Open Door, the company where you could buy a house on your phone. Is that a thing? It was. I don't think it did well. I think it. <laughs> <laughs> but for a while, they were like, this is how it'll be done, which was very terrifying. Buying a, a house on your phone. I mean, I remember when you used to have to wear a tuxedo to go buy a car. And now, on your phone, it's just <laughs> so flippant. Zach, tell us about when you had to go, wear a tuxedo to go buy a car. Well, you'd take your carriage, and then you'd go down to the store, and you'd say, put a motor in this and shoot the horse. And they'd say, okay, come back in a week. And then you'd go down the street at four miles per hour, and sometimes people would get in the way and you'd shoo them with the broom. Or you'd have your broom man do it. What the hell are you talking about? This is how cars were invented, Doug. Do you not know things? Did, did they he, shoot, you know all about this. Did they BMW I'm, a started this. I'm a Victorian relic. Did they shoot all the horses or just some of them? Uh, some of them. Some were turned into Budweiser commercials. <laughs> Others went racing. Others went racing. <laughs> None of this makes any sense. I think it literally makes none. <clears throat> they had you never. There was used never a time when you dressed up to go buy a car. All that every Sunday with my <laughs> <laughs> you guys would go to the dealer. Yeah, eighteen oh four. No, sorry, nineteen oh four. Put the family together. Said instead of church, you would go go dress up and go down to the Buick Oldsmobile REO dealership. I would wager <laughs> that. The first car purchases were done by done by people wearing very nice clothes. Everybody in that era wore nice clothes. You see That's those? A good point. <laughs> you went outside. You <laughs> see those pictures? You see those pictures? <laughs> those people are always dressed up. Coal miners are wearing like tux and tails. <laughs> they were. At every picture, they're looking at the camera with this dour. It's like this very serious face. There's yeah. no smiling. They wore nice clothes and they didn't smile. Probably because of all the horses they were shooting. There was a lot to smile about. Like, it, was, it was a sad era. Yeah, you're 12 years old and you got to work in the factory and right. you shot your horse. Where your tails like, in the factory probably hot. Um, somehow while we were discussing this brilliant thing, this Land Rover Discovery sold for $13,600. Which, by the way, this car is 70,000 miles. It has a long life left with its Formula One powertrain. Mm. Um, do you want to go to some? Or is this the next one? Yeah, oh wow! This, this one Audi. We have to okay, talk about. have you seen this? This is insane and amazing. Like bling. that. Uh, Look at that thing. Just purely, even if you aren't going to drive it, as something to like 
you know, for, to sit it's in the got cars a sequential and transmission, and, and it's bill of sale only. Yeah. Somebody at some point just committed. It has a what? What did you say? A sequential yes. transmission. Somebody at some point was just like, "I'm doing this," and just went all all in. out. I mean, this is full race car. If you took this to Cars and Coffee, this is one of the fake cars you could get away with telling people it's real. And what do they know? They don't know anything. This is a Brian Scotto fever dream. I really, he's a huge Audi fan. But this this looks. If I Incredibly told Kenan legit. that this was a real race car, he'd be like, yeah, it probably was. Yeah, you yeah. wouldn't have to make your your uh, Formula One engine argument with me. I wouldn't. <laughs> this is just like, yeah, it's a race is car. Is that a rear-mounted be. radiator? This is serious. It looks like it. Look at That's that. the thing. This, this dude went all out. There was ooh. nothing remaining from the factory, probably the glass. Yeah, that's a good point. Uh, I mean, it's a tribute car, but probably the glass. you should really just call it, it's a rally the car. car. Someone built... <laughs> Yeah, Someone got in a time machine and basically went back and stole <laughs> the Audi what, S1. Kenan, how's this going? This is go awesome. back to the go back to the auction. I mean, it's a very auction's going well, yeah, hundred and two thousand. It's a very niche right car, now. but like, how cool is this thing? Have you ever flexed more? Oh, so someone's doing my strategy here. They just raised it from one hundred two to one hundred five, one hundred five five eighteen. I think Ooh. it would cost a lot more than that to build this, especially especially with the sequential box because it's not just a body kit. And no, this they is, kept the this stock engine. Like this seems legit, like it has real hard. And you know what engines in it? The same turbo five cylinder that was in my RS two, mm-hmm. and the S six, and the S four, which was also the S six. You gonna try and tell reason. me that was in a Formula One car too? <laughs> <laughs> Everything was in a Formula One car. There's pro- you could probably get a Formula One car body and throw the two point two. Tur- this was a great powertrain. People did all sorts of crazy stuff to them, and they went fine. And here it is. This is this is a crazy vehicle. One hundred and eleven thousand. God, I love the, look. The, I love in the listing under factory equipment. All we have listed is air conditioning, and everything else is a <laughs> modification. <laughs> it's on V threes so fuel cell. This is a race car. I hope the cage is uh, done to a specification where you could actually run it. Well, I mean, look at it. There's no way the person went like cheaped out on the cage, right? No, probably not. So yeah, take this and do Colorado hill climb. It's still dirt. It's like Pike's peak, but it's still dirt. This thing is so deeply cool. The more I look at it, the cooler I think it is. Mm, One interesting thing when cars like this come to us, there's almost no way to price them. Yeah, I agree. We, We put reserves on, I don't know. I don't know what it's worth. I think it'd be hard to price it if it was the real car. <laughs> Even and harder, probably. like real race cars. It that's a hard thing. Modern, modern-ish race cars, unless they were owned by, you know, the very specific super famous person, are really hard right. to price. Right. And now this is like because they're hard to replica. Because it's what? not like cars from the six race cars from the sixties where like you or I could that's buy true. one and wrench on it in our spare time. Yeah, exactly. We this, yeah. Modern race cars are like impossible. Like Le Mans cars, it's like yeah, a disaster. You need to heat them up and like run the oil through it. And right. Then, yeah, it's crazy. One hundred seventeen thousand. Who are these bidders? They're going. They're going. It looks like it's kind of a 120,000. There, is there, do people comment on it as they bid or no? No, these people aren't commenting. They're just bidding. Just they're just money. saying, I mean, they're just cool. like, go, they're speaking with their wallets. This thing should be entered in like a Jim Connor contest or something. <laughs> it is just so cool. You can't sit here and not want to. I'm very interested in what continues here. Do you think the bidding will continue, Kenan? Oh, I, I would imagine it will. I mean, yeah, this is. Look at all those hella lights, Kenan. Uh, it's got hella yep. lights. Hella lights. Hella Thank lights. you, Zach. That's yeah. exactly <laughs> where we're going. I, I should talk. Uh, <laughs> are you able to read the momentum tea leaves as the bidding happens? Like, can you tell when something's going to just keep chugging when, along? Only when there's multiple bidders. And then it's okay. just like five bidders. You, it's just clear what's going to happen. Well, when you this, got five people involved, you just know how This it's one has two out. people that seem to really want it. 12, 11, that, 10. What's going to happen? I say it a lot with auctions. That's really all you need are two people that really want a car. Five, four, three, two. Three. Are we going to get another bit out of this thing? One, zero. Is this it? Is this the end? Kenan, your thoughts? Oh, r and Ooh, didn't quite make it. Didn't oh, no. quite get there. 120. We're going to need more than that, as they say in the physical auctions. Yep. That yep. won't quite do it today. Yes, what's the, yeah, what's the guy from uh, Gooding? He, he's the, the guy who insults people he's, he's bidding where he tells people, I will not accept that bid. It has to be more. <laughs> it has to be more. <laughs> that's, people, that's really funny. That's such a cool Charlie car, though. What a special thing. I wonder what that goes for. We're going to try to put together that deal afterwards, and I sincerely, sincerely, sincerely hope we are able to because it is so, so, so So, special. so cool. Can, can want to take some more questions? Can you please give us more questions? Yeah, of course. Okay, scroll down. I can't see anything. I got a camera there. Okay. I can't help with it. No, that this is great. This is great. Go no up, up, up there, there. Nareg. 
Right. Thoughts on the 24 Land Cruiser. As a snowboarder, I drive long distances and want some off-road capability. The fuel efficiency of a four-cylinder turbo hybrid seems nice compared to a V6 foreigner that gets 16 miles per gallon. Um, here's my thought on the new Land Cruiser. I am a Land Cruiser owner. I've had two. I have a 13, which is the, the last body style that we got. I really love the Land Cruiser. Um, I'm a little disappointed in the new one. It doesn't have a third row, which I need for my Land Cruiser cruiserly duties. And um, it's a lot smaller now, yeah. It's smaller. And so I don't quite understand kind of how they're positioning it and why they're positioning like that. It kind of seems like it's positioned next to the Forerunner, but the Forerunner is still around. And it almost seems like the Sequoia has kind of taken over where the Land Cruiser was. And so I, it's going to be cool to answer the question. I think it's going to be great. The numbers look good. The fuel efficiency is going to be a big benefit compared to mine, which is a disaster. Um, but I, I don't know. I, I'm curious to see what they do with the new Forerunner, which I imagine will also be dramatically improved fuel economy since it's going to have a hybrid powertrain as well. Um, I don't know. Sequoia is, is like the new the Land Cruiser of Land Cruisers now. And so I guess if you wanted some long distances and better fuel economy, this new Land Cruiser will be good. The problem, of course, will also be that it will be uh, long waiting lists and above MSRP oh, for yeah. a long time. For a while. Yeah. I'm happy that the Land Cruiser moniker at least is staying in the United States. I mm -hmm. was really, I mean, I think everybody was worried it was going to, but yeah, I, I, you make a lot of really good points there. I think, I think so. Uh, the internet says that it's going to get 27 miles per gallon combined, but it doesn't, I can't find highway. And if this is a hybrid, those usually do better in yeah. slower driving. But probably about the same. 27 is pretty good if that's true for a boxy that large. Good. And if he's getting 16, all right, that's a huge improvement. Yeah, that is okay. a huge improvement. It'll be good. I'm sure it'll be great. I wish it was a little bit bigger. I think bigger. it looks cool. And it looks but cool. But I, I agree with you, like positioning wise. Isn't I don't it, understand. Isn't it fighting with its sibling. I right. The forerunner. I don't understand that. It doesn't mm -hmm. really seem to make sense to me. Um, Burke writes, what is your favorite V8 motor? That's a, that's tough. There are a lot of it. I can I I don't know if I can pick a favorite. I can pick my top three. Okay. Uh, so are you thinking? It, I I can go. Zach, you can go. You Kevin sure. already knows. He's got his favorite V8. Ready. I'm a V8 man. Well, it's BMW. <laughs> my last two cars. Have been <laughs> yep. Yeah. Well, the the first one like that comes to mind. There are three very different V8s. The first one that comes to mind is my Ferrari 355's V8, the F129B-C. I think those engines are like. There's nothing like it. Kind of High notoriously revenue. unreliable, problematic engine. No, the engine, it's... The, sound the engine, yes, the... All right, so the, the, sound the early ones, the early ones, yeah. You talk about a company that does its testing on its clients. <laughs> it's Ferrari. Uh, the well, early ones in that were, era. The early ones were tough. So Tesla's not new in that. <laughs> <laughs> no, the Italians Ital Ital did that long before. Um, but I, that engine is just so unique. It's like, yes, sure, it does have problems. The later ones are a lot better, um, as, as I have experience with now. But... Re the, it just keeps on revving, and the sound it makes is one of the best automotive noises, period. Uh, and I think that engine is really special. Also, crazy high, out high output for such a tiny displacement engine. 385 horsepower, or 380 horsepower out of a 3.5 liter NA engine oh, in that's the a lot, 90s. So that's a lot of high specific liter? output. That's yeah, it was, that was their target with it. Kind uh, of a reported. problematic the problem the car, the car is problematic the engine itself like yes the valve guides in the really early ones were troublesome but otherwise like that engine does not have rod bearing issues that engine does not have like cylinder scoring that's not things that happen with a 355 and even so like it's actually relatively easy to service those engines like, except that you have of, like, to pull it out of the from an car once you take yeah. it out once take it's it out, out it's there once it's out, it's hey, no problem. Hey, Mr. It's a lot easier to work on an engine once it's out of the car. I've done that. It is. It is. Right. right hey, Mr. Right. Formula One engine in a road car. It, it's, you know, <laughs> you tell me that engine's easy to service? Get out of here. Uh, well, so that's Formula One engine in a road car. Of course it's not easy to service. <laughs> what do you want? Just bring it to Braun and Company or whatever. Right. <laughs> yeah. Uh, my next favorite engine, obviously, the S62 and the E39 M5 is one of my favorite engines. Um, I just th they just deliver such great torque, but they also rev quite high for what it for what it is. It's a big five liter V8, and at the time, 400 horsepower out of that engine was like pretty remarkable to have that. And they're also relatively low stress. So that now Doug's gonna say that engine has problems too. Yeah, yeah, at 250 thousand miles short. Yeah, they've got some things you got to deal <laughs> with. Like that's what I've had to do. But otherwise, mine rock solid, and a lot of people who are in the end community do agree. Like they're they're very reliable engines, uh, as far as M engines go in particular. Um, but I, I like the way that engine just delivers power. Um, and it was sophisticated, you know, it had infinitely variable valve timing. Um, it was just, a, it, was a, it was ahead of time. ITBs, not a lot of V8s have ITBs. And, you know, I'll give you that because it's in your car and it's generally regarded to be pretty good. Fine. Give, what's your last one? The last, the last V8, um, 
I have to say it's a it's another it's another Ferrari engine, but the 458 engine. Yeah, uh, the NAV8 is like one of the ultimate, one of the ultimate V8s. High displacement, high power, high torque, reliable, um, just like elastic, just revs so fast and just keeps on going. Um, that just delivered. That's like the ultimate V8, I think. Yeah. Okay. Those are good. Not as good as mine, but go ahead, Zach. Uh, I was gonna say 458 Ferrari, and then. Uh, Ford 427 side oiler, just old school, big block muscle stuff. Nothing, nothing sounds like it. Nothing know. feels like it. Yeah. Um, torque all, all day. No, not many revs, but that's okay. And then I'll go Audi, uh, 4.2, like Ooh. the R8. Revs Ooh. to eight grand. Ooh. Yeah. Another I've sounds amazing. Sounds like a, a, an engine that has two more liters of displacement, but also sounds special and refined. Yeah, that's true. It is an unusual sound. It has a very identifiable yes. V8 sound. Which is and it was hard, good. Yeah, hard it, the, the ones in the S4 had issues, but the R8 one is a different powertrain, which is generally reliable. We get R8s yeah. submitted to us with 70, 80,000 miles all they day long. They fixed some things from the S4, I think. And yeah. the, the R8's biggest problem is that air conditioning thing. thing, which is completely unrelated to the Engine. the engine, yeah. Um, no, they, they although, do doesn't have, the engine do have, have to come out? Build up things that is oh, one yeah. of the issues you got to contend with. But that's a very minor thing, to be honest. Like that's relatively easily dealt with. And like we're talking favorites. I mean, like yeah. you know, the best one of the best V8s would be like the Lexus uh, ISF. That's a five liter. Yeah, it works all the time. They don't have any problems. But to me, it just sounds like a Mustang when you put pipes on it. And they're great, and they're amazing cars. But it's that not, is it's a good not, motor. Though. So it's not. It's a great motor, but it's not one of my favorites because it's not as special. Yeah. It is good, though. It's a very good engine. Um, the answer to this question, and I'm sorry they had to. The answer to this question is number one. No, maybe not number one. Okay, I'm not going to rank mine. I'm just going to say them. LS. Come on. Yeah, the LS is a great engine. Impressive. Again, Extremely. Yeah. Okay, okay. All right. All right. Continue. I mean, you, you put an this. LS in everything, and it's great. It is one of the most ubiquitous best, V8s. Uh, ubiquitous, relatively lightweight, powerful, yeah. good. But, but we're, not, we're talking about favorites like your personal favorites well, that was the be, question no, it can be. so it, all right so you're an alice man okay before i go any further i have to ask this question is best v8 can i say a v10 <laughs> no oh, okay okay all right. but it has eight also the oh question. i see you're like it has eight plus two as a bonus <laughs> That's two now eight. it's like a king size snickers you're like now with 20 percent more <laughs> right and like as if you were to name your best your favorite fun size candy bar like a king size snickers would it has a fun size in it you understand yeah, that all right i'm gonna, I'm gonna stop you more so ridiculous train of thought no you can't okay, say v10 10, stick to Fine. V8s. Um, I'm gonna, this is going to blow your mind. Coyote. Uh-huh. The Coyote V8. In the month. It's just so good. It's not that expensive. It's got tons of torque. It's just good. It's fun. It's True. fast. It's the loud. The question again is not the best. It's your favorite. So your favorite is the Coyote V8. Well, I guess they, did, they did say best, right? A favorite. What is your, no, it's your favorite, favorite V8? Oh, My favorite, actual yeah. favorite. The it number one. Favorite. I love the Coyote V8. I had right. a, every time I get a Mustang as a press car, I'm just like obsessed. The answer to this question, is, though, it is a the good answer. answer to the question is the Mercedes-Benz M113 V8, which was used in various applications. It was in the G-Wagon, where it was a 5-liter. It was later put in the E55, where it was supercharged, and it was an incredible powertrain. It had 470 horsepower. It's the greatest V8 ever. And, and very reliable. Proud to have an M113 in my G-Wagon. It is an incredible engine. Reliable, torquey, True. smooth. Yeah. Very refined. Yeah, yeah, that's a very good. That's a. I actually wouldn't fight you on that. That one. is God's V8. Well, it, it depends right. on which country you're in. <laughs> I think if you ask that question, you get a bunch of different answers. Interesting. Yeah. In, in Japan, it would be the Land Cruiser 4.7. Um, Although maybe I'm wrong. If you go to you go to West Virginia, you'd be like, "Hey, what do you think God's V8 is?" And they'd be like, "Absolutely, Mercedes Benz." <laughs> <laughs> yep. And one thirteen, big fan. I'd be, I'd owe you five bucks. Yeah, and one thirteen, big fan. <laughs> yeah. yeah, big fan. They man, might you say you, that there. That thing is so smooth and reliable. Put one in my Dodge, man. <laughs> <laughs> Dang, man. Dang. What's wrong with you? <laughs> you brought me here. This is your idea. You've met me before. <laughs> okay, let's let's talk about the Mitsubishi Delica. Sp- what is this called? The Mitsubishi, can you Delica pull this Space up? Gear, Mitsubishi yeah. Delica Space Gear Jasper Four Wheel Drive. What What is this graphic? Zach, can you please narrate for us what's happening here? Uh, yeah, this is like um, find a close up of that graphic. Bob I'm Ross sure painted, a, uh, started to paint a mountain on the side <laughs> of it. this graphic? And what then is this thing? Someone what called him away for a second. That's only part of it. It looks like yeah, that's what the door. It, looking oh oh okay, so it also is. This is quite worn. What was uh, it ever supposed to be? This was what ninety. This was mid nineties, right? Right. 
This is that was the thing. Remember, huh. it, this is like uh, what is this dumb paper cup that everyone's putting on sweatshirts <laughs> and stuff? And everyone's like, "Remember yes. this? Isn't this cool?" No, it's a cup that existed when you were seven. It doesn't mean it looked good. Someone, someone at at uh, um, good it's vibes, like so good bug. vibes car meet had like their white boxer liveried in that cup design. Just everyone, calm down. People anyway. didn't like that cup. Maybe they should have done this design instead. They should look done at this that. Are those instead. supposed to be flames on the bottom? No, I think that's a reflection of a mountain. That's what it looks like to me. Like well, it is the Jasper. Yeah. It is the Jasper. Right. Now, you're thinking, what did the Jasper add that the regular one didn't have? I am. Zach, please, uh, enlighten us. <laughs> uh, let's go to Keenan. Uh, let's go back to Doug. I'm going to eat more cookie. These are very Doug, good, by yeah, the way. Yeah. The, I, I, the I, Jasper, it's w- very, very obvious what the No, I have no idea. These, these Japanese cars come to us. They get yeah. submitted to the site, right? And they have names that are unbelievable. I mean, just, you know, Great. trim levels that with 14 names that yeah. no one has ever... And you can't find any information on what that was. <laughs> it's a little bit of word salad, but uh, it's all like the, the, the use of space is great because I don't know if it probably means there's lots of room in it. What, but what is, is that a couch? Have, have you driven? Is, it has a, 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 yes, it appears to have a couch. What? I think it can, well, it rotates, I think. I believe it does rotate. So yes. your passenger seat can rotate 90 degrees and now you have a more open seating area. What? Look how there's easy a, There's like a love of, you know. seat back there. Yeah. It turns now the cool bed. thing about these Delicas, these, this, is, this is the cool thing about these Delicas. They are four wheel drive yep. like a Jeep. Mm-hmm. But unlike a Jeep, you have a love seat in the back. And that's a pretty cool situation. That and cool. I will say that I've driven, uh, Matt Farah has the previous generation yeah. of Delica, which four-wheel drive, turbo diesel engine, slow as all hell. Right. Like, you can't even try to go up a hill. You'll get passed by a person on foot. But it feels much more solidly built than any Jeep of that era I've been in. Right. Like, those things, are, Jeeps are amazing at their job, but they kind of shake apart. And these things feel really solid. I have this dream of having, like, a trail minivan. Because you can take everybody, but like be on a trail. Yeah, but have they don't exist. I mean, like, there's no Sienna. Yes, they do. This is that. This is this exactly is a that. literal trail minivan. We've talked about your dreams. You've never once mentioned this is a dream of yours. Oh, it'd be so great. You don't have to take two cars when you go out off roading. Dude, huh. these are super cool. This is like the junior version of the Iceland Tour van. Yeah. Yes. And uh, this one, they move the engine. So I think Matt's the, Matt's the engine like between the two front seats. So you have amazing uh, approach and departure angles, right. but over speed bumps, it's really bumpy. This is probably a little better because it's a front engine car now, and the wheelbase is lengthened right. a little bit. But still, it looks like it has a lot of clearance. This um, would be fun. Yeah, you this, this is so Matt has the the original Delica, which was really cool. Mm. This is the second gen Delica. Right. Can can you or I, actually there were Delicas in the sixties and seventies, but these everybody knows these as Kenan, Can you please pull up a picture of the new current Mitsubishi Delica? Just go on Google. You know Google. Google.com. Yeah. Oh, God. He put in Delica. Oh. Okay. Go to images. Go to images. Were you worried there'd be more? Look than at the black one. The thing. third one. The black one. Oh. Oh, tiny picture of it, though. Look how cool that's that looks. A, wow. Someday that will be legal. And that's going to be the coolest Delica of them all. Uh, okay. <clears throat> I'm not into the grill, huh. the chrome you, grill. No, click but on that I do blue like one right below it. He's wrong. No, no. That's a much, much or older one. Go, go, go to that blue. No, the t- one to the right. One to the right. No. One to the, right. one to the left. <laughs> This is like early air traffic control. You're like yelling at the planes and they can't hear you. <laughs> I the went one, one to the right, no, the one to the left. One, the You're saying one. blue. <laughs> that one's blue. That one's blue. Which blue you know one do I'm you want? I don't. I have no idea. You've gestured so wildly. <laughs> no, the middle one, the middle blue one there. This is like a yeah, weird that. form of battleship. Mm. Look at that. You don't think that's cool? Uh, I think it's a pretty good looking van. I like, you. The sh- I like the shape of the eyes. I think I would change the grill to black. I don't like the chrome. You would you would black out the grill of yeah, a Delica? I would. But I like the, the very simple, I don't know, not wedge, that's the wrong term, but... Uh, that is a cool-looking vehicle. Nice. Yeah. Hmm. And someday those will be legal. But are those are those also still four-wheel drive, turbo diesel? Yeah, they still really? are using the same formula. Really? Yes. <laughs> they're, still, right. they're around New Zealand, like, commonly, because it's everybody, for the same reason everybody loves these, everybody still loves the... I don't know if the new, new uh, ones have, uh, but that one came out, that was, like, ni- late 90s came out. Yeah. Um, that's yeah, 6100 bucks is, is now oh, the number. 17, 16, 15. Wow. Doesn't that seem like a pretty good amount for a trail minivan? Absolutely. Uh, the only thing with these is finding someone to work on them 
can be a little challenging because it's a very specialty vehicle. Doesn't so. it have? Does it not have an engine that it's a? Oh, it's a diesel that we it's probably a di- didn't turbo get here. diesel Mitsubishi turbo diesel. You know what I, I like about got. Mitsubishi in this era? Can go back to the pictures of this thing. Oh, oh wow! Source code. <laughs> Make some changes. <laughs> that was quite the line. Go to the there front. Go. go to the front. You know what I like? The, the offset uh, hood. Mitsubishi did this on a lot of cars because the Eclipse had this too. Yeah. There, it, in that car, it wasn't a scoop, but it was a, a hump. Um, hump. Yeah. <laughs> they could have made that their thing. <laughs> like a, like a, a non-symmetric. <laughs> Isn't that I weird? I always liked it when I see the Eclipses without this, the hump, though. I just go, oh, like it. Right. I thought it added some cool character. It did. And it meant it was the GST or the X, right? It was the right. turbocharger. Yeah. Yeah. I liked it. I would swap out my hood. I saw oh, then a people Saturn. Would think the you auto of that's yeah. the NA auto of the <laughs> <laughs> You saw what? I saw a Saturn with a hood scoop uh, the other day. Oh. Non functional, of course. Why do you think non functional? You don't think that guy's got a big turbo motor under there? I just couldn't see through the vents in the front. I could see that it was like a vent over a solid wall. <laughs> but it looked Oh, so awesome. it was just mounted on it didn't even cut a hole in the hood. Right. It was just placed on yeah. the hood. Got I it. was about to make fun of it and I saw that he was still in the car, so I got real quiet and <laughs> left. Was this an early Saturn SL one, SL two? I think SL1. I think early. The, the beginning era. Yeah. What a great time that was they in the automobile. stuff. Cars worked. Right. Not, not those for long. Um, <laughs> can, we, uh, can we now go... Actually, Kenan, can you pull up, as this Delica continues, can you pull up this RS4? Of course. The very next vehicle that's yes. coming up? Speaking of oh. the Audi 4.2. I mean, um, it's just one of the coolest sedans ever. Yep. Yeah. An all-wheel drive version of the E39 M5, basically. Where I've often, th- I had, I've thought about having one of these for a while. A friend of, two friends of ours did. They own the same one. Um, the whole, I mean, just cool. Manual transmission only. Great styling. Amazing sound. Yep. Excellent performance. And just cool. Yeah. Yep. Um, they still look great. Also, it is from that era where Audi could make an RS car and have it be subtle. Mm-hmm. The, yeah. the fender flare. I mean, you drive, you see this on the road, you would have no idea that it was. Anything special, unless you know that it's something special. Yeah, it's, it's just so a really cool. good looking car. Uh, Came in good colors. Uh, yeah, this color looks amazing. And I think the front design of it is just fairly timeless. Like it, it yeah. still looks modern enough and aggressive enough. Yeah, uh, it doesn't look too dated. Which, by the way, I remember people criticizing that grill for being too big at the time. Little did they know what was coming. Little but Audi was one of the first to really get on that big grill thing. Did you criticize them, or were you like, no, no, wait till BMW does it. <laughs> you guys are gonna love it. I was always way ahead of my time design wise. I thought the I knew all this stuff was gonna you be. You are fine. constantly at the front. I'm at the I'm at the absolute cutting edge. You saw that Delica that I liked. Mm-hmm. You saw my A class over there. Um, uh, yeah, great this position. particular RS4, go back to the, to the listing itself. This particular RS4 is like a very special one. It is in this unusual blue color. It's good. That's it good. Uh, has on, under 50,000 miles. This is like a really, really, really nice, like desirable version of this car. Yep. I don't, modifications. The RS4 market has generally been pretty strong over the last couple of years. But this car uh, in particular is like a, a lot of these were, were gray um, or black or that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Or they well, have the yellow as well. And well, and a lot of them have a lot of miles. Cool. I mean, it, a lot of them got miled up. People bought them to drive. Not a lot drive, were kept yeah. like this. A lot of them were um, heavily modified, and a lot of them were crashed like a ton. Yeah, people smashed these things. We sold one at one point with six accidents. I don't think they. <laughs> well, they they have uh, bad weight distribution. I mean, the, the engine is like that was kind of an Audi front. performance car problem. Yeah, exactly. For My RS two was like time. that. I think I think the four liter. Well, actually the the. The increasing size of cars mixed with the four liter helped Audi move the weight to yeah. the back of the car. Yeah. Um, yeah I found some really funny it. comments on an RS4 forum when I was looking up these. Someone someone asked for common problems because they're shopping, and some an owner responded, uh, the attitude on RS4 forums, wanting to go faster, <laughs> expecting a 4,000-pound car to behave like a 2,500-pound car, <laughs> leaking DRC, lack of maintenance. Like I just like that they were like, the top three problems are... Inherent to the vehicle. <laughs> the attitude on RS4 forms, God, you could totally see yeah. that. Hey, guys, I'm, I'm curious about my Pixel display is burnt out. This has been asked a thousand times. Yeah. Use the search function. Yeah. What are you That's thinking? Every forum. <laughs> that is every forum. But man, they're so good looking. They're great. And yeah. the ironic thing, of course, is you use the search function and find that thread where people just complain that you should use the search function to find other threads. It's like, just please answer. They are so good looking. The B, this is a B7. The B7 mm-hmm. was such a nice looking car. And oh, yeah. what's crazy is the red line is only 200 RPMs uh, below the red line of the S2000 AP2. Is that true? Yeah, that, the AP2 only red, red lines at uh, 8,000. 
which you're like, oh, that's really high. And then you go, wait, the Audi... With a V8. G- gentleman sedan rev right. to that? Like, okay, suddenly the AP2 doesn't seem as cool. My only drawback and disappointment... By the way, I love this interior color. The, my only disappointment yeah, of color combo. this car is and will always be that Audi gave us two body styles, the sedan and the convertible. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the wagon they made, but they're like, now nah, we're going to give them the convertible. Americans like convertible. Thanks yeah. so much, That's Audi. What, yeah, what a great, what a weird <laughs> we, decision. We really appreciate that convertible. Wait, could you get an RS4 convertible? or didn't, I know you could get an S4 convertible. Yeah. Oh, they yeah. sold the RS4 convertible. It was also manual only. All right. We sold a couple. Yeah, there's one. There it is right there. <laughs> Yep. And it was like great. What an unusual for a four vehicle. seat, like too large, like because it was the intent was it was based on the A4 convertible, which was supposed to be like a cruiser that you rode around in with your pals. You mm-hmm. know, it, it wasn't ever a car that. It, so they had the wagon and they sold the wagon overseas, but they gave us the convertible instead, and we will forever be disappointed by that. But we have the sedan. We have the sedan, and we're lucky to have that. Forty four thousand. This thing really, is going. It, it wasn't sold here for long. It was only 07 and 08. And that was it. Was it 07 and 08? That's all they sold the RS4 for. Here I really US. learned yeah. about the differences in income when I was in college and I was a valet and a girl in college pulled up in an S4 convertible and I was like, whoa, S4 convertible, V8. And she went, oh, yeah, I got it because I like the color. And then she just walked into the restaurant. And I was like, oh, <laughs> we're different. <laughs> <laughs> Where was this? Colorado. Are you from Colorado? Uh, no, Santa Cruz. Oh, I went to school there. You went, okay, yeah. got it. Um, 44.5, we're going. Kenan? Kenan, you got any predictions? That's a good car. Eighty million dollars. Wow. Kenan, it's not a BMW, so Kenan is not aware of the market. No, I, I like I like the RS4 a lot, and I can pull up our results. Um, but I think that I think that how many of these have we auctioned? Well, thirty-one, counting um, one uh, of them. Yeah, counting count- a couple of B5 wagons. Yes, if I, yeah, we, can, we can narrow that down a little bit more. So B7 is twenty-seven, twenty-seven of them. I mean, this one. This one's hard to judge because of the low mileage and the color combination. It just seems very clean. We've a lot of them do have mods and things like that, like you like you said. Um, Forty-five, seven fifty. Seems like this is so, the most expensive one yet. Based I mean, on the it's results, it's, yeah. it's like the nicest well, one. Close. It wouldn't. It doesn't yeah. surprise me at all. It's going to bring big money. It really, really, really deserves it. I thought we had a really strong sale. It's amazing, by the way, that early on in our lives, that blue one for twenty. Well, how many Ooh. miles did that have? Uh, 113. Didn't, didn't, didn't C.J. Wilson buy this one? Isn't this the one that C.J. Wilson bought? Yes, I believe, that, I believe that is correct. Uh, he knew. He had it figured out. Yep. <laughs> yeah. He had it figured out. He was like, I'm going to spend 20 grand and get an RS4. Yeah. That's now, the right color. Now that you can't do that anymore. Those no, days have those ended. Days are, Wait, are gone. go back to the, the results. I think uh, one, two, three on the left. Is that the, this car that we're watching but sold previously or just same? No, nah, different interior, black interior. Oh, you're right. Okay. And, uh, and more miles. Yep. 47,000. Oh, this oh. one is going, going, going. Yeah, if you want a nice RS4, it's hard to find. You can see a lot of these. The numbers are a lot lower, and that's because yep. they're miled up or damaged or whatever. 47. The, yeah, the attrition is high. Here's the person who used my bid strategy. Went up by $1,300. Boom. Have you ever owned a car with a white interior? Yeah. My Mercedes station wagon now has a white interior, and I have a child. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> and you don't wear jeans anymore. I don't go into the back. I don't wear jeans anymore. I don't go into the back. Yeah. Guys, I don't want to see what has happened. <laughs> That's okay. How do you get the kid out of the car? You just, I put you him just in the car seat. Him, like, come on. And <laughs> I put him in the car seat. I take him out of the car seat. But you can do that from outside. I don't like, look. I it's, gotcha. it's, it's, it's willful ignorance of what's going on. <laughs> I, oh, I see. It's like a grab. It's like Scrabble bag. Like, you look away <laughs> and you reach in and you find kid. You take kid out and then close door. Right. Yeah, there's a lot of food in there. Probably. And well, it's, sorry to interrupt, but forty seven thousand dollars. That's what it sold for. Boom, forty seven thousand dollars. The RS four has sold. It still seems I mean, well bought. That, that it seems probably like a nice will seem well bought in a few years. I have no idea. See, I mean, obviously, it's the top of our results and maybe deservedly so. But awesome. in a few years, we're going to look back and talk about an NA V eight's manual transmission, two year only car, only RS four ever sold in America, by the way, and forty seven grand is big money. Okay. Yeah. Do we have more questions? Can of we do course. a few more? Yeah, we can go back to is, is this like an updated list or do these get updated yep, as these we go? These get updated in real time. Okay. Oh, Bartek writes, the Tesla Cybertruck is coming out soon. Do you think it will be successful? Define Zach? soon. <laughs> I mean, there are prototypes rolling around. I'm seeing it okay. all over Instagram. It's starting to actually happen. Do I think it'll be successful? Uh, I, I, I don't know how, how we de- define success. Honestly, like, how much have they spent on the development of it? How much? How many do they need to sell to start making profit? I think the people that put down money for them will be very excited to get them. But I don't know. It, 
I don't know. It's a, it seems like a weird truck. Like the bed's kind of small. It tapers, doesn't it? I mean, it just well, seems I like think it the does bed truck itself, things weird. Well, it's, I guess it does sort of taper, yeah. It tapers from top to bottom, right? Yeah. So, I mean, the, yeah, yeah. I, you know, it's, but it, I guess it's like an activity truck. It's like the, on the, uh, the Hyundai Santa Cruz. Like you can put bikes in it and other things, but you can't load tables and pallets. But and it's stuff. massive. That's the difference. Oh, the, the bed. Yeah, it's a huge vehicle. It will, I mean, I have no doubt it will be successful among the, the Tesla set that really want. Do you have like, no doubt about that? Because I think once those people realize how big a full size truck is, they're going to be like, no. No, I, but I still, still I, I, there will be definitely people who have this thing. Those people have never even been in an F-150 in their lives. Not a single Tesla owner has ever spent time in an F-150. <laughs> this is a slight generalization, but generally speaking, I'm not wrong about this. Well, I think the question would be, people that have ordered Ford Lightnings or the Silverados or have them now, would they, if, if they also own a Model 3 or Model S, would they convert? Because they go, oh, this has I, good functionality. See, or, I don't, I don't, I don't think so. Especially don't like For won't? the Ford people in particular, the other thing with this truck is it's so late. Ford brought out the Lightning, and Ford people, if they want an electric truck, they're going to buy that. Like they're, but also, just don't you American think companies. like a Ford Lightning dude isn't going to be a Cyber Truck dude? I, just, I think there's some. I think there's crossover. I do. Just, I think. I think there. Most that, people are. Do you remember, do you remember the, the other great truck, the Lincoln Blackwood? Yes, <laughs> of course. <laughs> that was an Blackwood. attempt at trying to capture some of the supposed Ford F one fifty buyers who maybe wanted something different. And they didn't. Right. They wanted a Ford F one hundred and fifty because in their world you can't drive around. Yeah, instead I mean, of an F one hundred and fifty, you can't drive around in a Lincoln. It, you you look like this, an but idiot. Then Cadillac did it with the truck, and like that was significantly more successful. That was cool. That, there you are. This for a lot of people the Lincoln is Black cool. Not people, cool. I, okay, I, they, fair. That's a good point. That's people a good point. think that this is really cool. I'm not. I'm, in, in, a, in a way, it is. I'm excited to see like the first one driving around. I, I personally don't like the way it looks, and I'm not like a huge Tesla person. But I think also for people who are brand loyal to Tesla, of which there are a lot, and they are very dedicated. But they all live in cities and have Model Threes. They have. I, they're gonna be. I, they're they're are, gonna get the, in this thing and be like, "What have I done?" Maybe. But by that point, Tesla's already sold it, so they don't, <laughs> no, no, they don't but care. I think, but I think that's not, that's not They're going to start posting on the forums because that's all Tesla people do is post on forums, and they're going to be like, this is way bigger than you realize. You it's like driving function. an RV. Then again, a lot of these people also have sprinters, so they're probably cool with it. <laughs> I think it goes back, you might be right, but it goes back to the what is the definition of success for them because if they sell to the Tesla fans, is that enough people? Because the, the Model 3's big success was selling to Broad so base. many huge yeah. broad, it's the, isn't it right. the most popular car in America right now if it's not the most the popular world? car in California and it's it, one of the most popular in right so they they broke through all the the early adopters yeah. they broke through all of that so can this truck do that because I I knew that this was a problem Ford has had to pause orders on the lightning because they're having quality issues so that yeah. might Tesla has quality issues there. they're just so, like yep yeah, Go exactly. Send them out. I don't know. Right. I and think well, it looks like There's never been a Tesla, Tesla, Tesla People are also used to it. And just like BMW people, like you and I, they'll be like, ah, it's, it's fine. Once you do these couple of things to it, it'll right. be fine. And they do. Uh, they don't care. But I don't I'm very curious. Care. I'm not sure if it'll be successful. It is heinous. I know that. Yeah. <laughs> well, I think it's, also, it's one of the best marketing exercises I've ever seen. It is. When it came out, that's all anybody talked about was how ugly it was. And like, but... People talked about it for genuinely nine months. I mean, like that's you heard it everywhere from normal people. It's like, oh yeah, I know. Uh, that's all or anybody would Elon ask me Musk about. Oh, you, the you do cars, but it. some people thought it looked cool. I mean, some people were really into the way it looks. You know, yeah. styling is subjective. Right. Um, I don't know. We'll see. Can I, may, may I take one of these? Uh, I want to talk about the the Gordon Murray. Oh wow. T50. Okay. Alexander writes, "What do you guys think about the GMA T50? Will this car ever be treated like a true F1 successor by enthusiasts?" Very curious to hear your thoughts. Kenan is the is the greatest living fan of the McLaren F1. Yes, and I got to see the T50 at, at Monterey. I got to hear it drive around um, Laguna Seca, which was one of the most unusual sounds I've ever heard an engine make. It was just, it was so, it just revved so crazy high. It sounded more like a motorcycle, but like a really big one because it's got a lot of cylinders and it was just sublime. Um, do I think it's going to be treated like the F1? Uh, I think that in some regards, yes, in some regards, no. The F1 is going to be, it is going to remain very special. I think in a lot of ways because of what it did at Le Mans. I know it was won by a technicality due to rain <laughs> and the, the the prototype cars failing, but it did win Le Mans regardless so on its the first XJR attempt. The XJR15, it's not helping. It's not helping. F right, but the XJR15, it's, it's not helping F pace sales. <laughs> <laughs> but the F1, regardless, the F1 is regarded as a legend. Will the T50 be considered the same thing? I don't know. I got to talk to Gordon Murray when I was uh, um, at the Quail uh, and and talked to him a little bit and. It was interesting to hear how many customers were like, I want, you know, I want, remember the F1 as a kid, and this is my second chance to, like, have one of these. And the lot, most of the customers said that was, like, why they were buying this car, because they clearly feel 
that it will be as, like as revered as the F1 is. That said, I think the F1 is better looking. The rear end of the T50 is not my favorite. I know the, the fan F1 is a big deal, but it looks, it's a lot. Um, but the F1 isn't very attractive, being honest. Oh, I think it looks pretty awesome. Yeah, you're yeah. seduced by the top speed record, no, the Le Mans win, the no, three seats. This is because it's got like, 14. Don't discount the way he feels the sidewall. The That's true. And it has a ton of dead cat space behind above the rear wheel. It sits kind of weird. But I think the shape is awesome. Um I, you know, it's the GMAT 50 thing is interesting. I have to admit, I've staked like my entire automotive financial situation on the fact that cars like this won't be made anymore. So I'm a little nervous about the T50 because they're like making one <laughs> again. Yeah. Like I have talked to several people who have gotten out of their career GTs to buy this car. And that's interesting to me. It's wow. Interesting. Well, it's, I mean, this, if, if it is true that regular, I, I do feel that the uh, cars like this are going away. The engine is an absolute masterpiece. It's a master stroke. The one big difference, the answer to this question is probably no, because the one big difference is the F1 is special, not just because it was this incredible thing, which it was, but because it was the fastest car in the world yep. and it won Le Mans. And like yep. the T50 will not so, be either of those so things. Yeah, I, so I as do special agree with as that. it is, so I think the F1 will always be the most special. I think the T50 will be revered in a different way. Right, uh, like career, quite. probably like Carrera GT Correct. and the the other analog exotic cars. The special thing being that it came so much later when we thought cars like that were never going to exist. Yeah, it was again. the end. The F1 I, set the bar so long ago, and, yeah. and kept it for a long time, basically until, you know, Bugatti Veyron, like, knocked on the door for top speed. It, which in itself is car. insane, right? The fact that Volkswagen had to pour several zillion dollars into creating this thing to take out this guy, that this car that this dude you got built. got to catch Britain. Gordon. Right. Exactly. Like, it's, it's crazy. So to I think that's it. why the F1, yeah, and the F1 now is, what, $20 million for a bad one? Like, Mr. Right. Bean's salvage title? Another thing, by the way, production <laughs> numbers is another reason why it won't ever be treated like a true F1 successor. At the end of the day, they only made 65 McLaren F1 road cars. I don't know what the T50 production numbers are, I but I... It's not many. It's also really? very limited production. Oh, the well, then I don't have nothing to worry about with my I think it, I value. think. I don't remember exactly. The T33, they're making quite a few more. Oh, right, right, right. Yeah. Because they're using that engine, but not the central seating position, which I actually like the T33. That would be the one I would buy if I were ever in a position to... Central choose. seating position is godly though it I think, is godly I, I, I think it i think it will be celebrated i don't think it will ever, ever be as valuable as the f1 because it's not because the f1 has a head start yeah figuratively literally on value but um and nostalgia plays a really nostalgia is a and very power, powerful marketing tool but yeah, but, and, yeah. yeah agreed um Okay, can we go that. down to this question from Oscar Hernandez? Doug, why choose a Countach over a newer but future classic like a 599 six-speed? Or do you believe the Countach will hit 60s for our value level? Zach, why don't you go ahead and take this one? <laughs> oh, sure. Uh, well, I think Doug bought it because this was the cool <laughs> car when Doug was six years old. And the 599 was probably the cool car when you, Oscar, might have been six years old. I'm not trying to be a jerk. But, the, again, going right back, the power of nostalgia. It's, yeah. I mean, they're remaking every movie that came out when we were young, like, there is so much money to be milked from nostalgia and yeah. the power it has in your brain. And when you saw it as a youth, like you, no, nothing you see when you're 20 is going to probably combat the joy you felt when you saw it when you were 10. Yeah. If it's like a car thing, it's just not. I right? also, to answer this question specifically, 599 six speed is a special car and mostly because of its transmission. The Countach is a special car because it's overall a special car. And, I, yeah. and, and also I just wanted that feeling, that vintage car, angry, mad craziness feeling. And it has that, obviously. It idles. It sounds <clears throat> rad. When you pulled in here, it was, oh, it's, well, it's got some depth to it. And it's you just nice. don't get that. Also, also a 599, you sneeze at it and it costs 10 grand. 599s are hidden, unreliable cars. Oh, yeah. These are cheap to maintain. <laughs> oh, yeah. 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 Well, if I'm going to spend a lot of money maintaining something, I don't want it to be a 599. Fair. Keep the, going down. Well, there's, there's one other half of that question. Do you believe the Countach will hit 60s level Ferrari values? Um, uh, maybe a, 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 t a 2 plus 2, 250 GT 2 plus 2. I don't think nice. they're going to be worth that much. The mid two thousand of them, but I think that they're undervalued where they are, which is one of the few cars where I think are currently undervalued. So many cars had a crazy, yep. crazy car value run up, and I think the Countach is still cheap for what it is. Totally. Scroll down, we can do maybe like two or three more. All right. Uh, Kenan, why don't you pick a good one? Let's see. Uh. Doug, would you be willing to get your career GT recommissioned by Graham Rahal? Performance? No, I've seen those. They look cool, but no, I, I love love how the car is uh, a deep OE. I'm an OE guy with a couple of little OEM plus mods. I agree. And you have your car serviced by Jimmy Rapazzi, who is like the god of career The god GTs of career GT. Okay, here's a good one. Alex, what do you guys think of the Lotus Evora? Kenan? 
A uh, lot of value. I think they're really cool. Um, I think they also, that V6 sounds really great. Um, and they're, you know, you get them with a manual transmission too. Um, I've always thought they were really cool cars. Pull up, pull up Evora auctions. Do you know what Evoras go for? Mm, they're bargains. 60? Yeah, you'd Depending. think. You'd think. Like 50 to 70? Go to that yellow one. This thing sold for 31. Oh my God! Now, admittedly, it's not a Evora 400, and it's not the supercharger. And blah blah blah. Almost ninety thousand miles. It is miles, still. It, it it's got miles, but it is. But the, remember, the the engine comes from Toyota V6 from Camry. That That's like a pretty damn good money for that car. It's a lot of value. A yeah. Lot of value. And it looks cool. Uh, and and they drive. They do drive, they drive nicely. Great. Like, like oh, they ride so well. They're yeah. fun Handle cars. So well. The only concern, obviously, is whether the company will continue to exist. But that's be been a concern for, for years. But the other thing is that uh, I've heard the body panels are very hard to get. So like if you, get in, a, if you get in a fender bender, yeah, it could take a long time to get because it's a huge clamshell in the front. Yeah. Uh, which is kind of a bummer. Okay, one more, one more, one more. Kenan, do you want to pick? Zach, do you want to pick? Zach, why don't you pick one? Oh, jeez. Sorry um, to put you on the spot there, but... Nissan Figaro, there's so many. Uh, yeah, they're, they're quite... Quite a few to right. choose from. Justin asks, is front wheel drive a compromised driving experience? He's cross shopping the Integra Type S as a one car solution versus a dedicated rear wheel drive enthusiast car. Uh, the Integra Type S is an amazing car, like full stop. It's a little bit loud on the highway. It's my only complaint about it, but it is super fun, super usable, looks nice inside and outside in my opinion. Stereo is, incred- is great. So I used to think back in high school, I thought front wheel drive was lame because all the marketing that Muscle Car Magazines put out about it worked on me. And, uh, <laughs> and I was that jerk who was like, and then I, wrong wheel drive. Yeah, all, all I, was, I was that guy. And then I drove a rabbit that was modified, and I was like, what's all this turning about? <laughs> <laughs> um, so All it took was a rabbit that was modified. Well, it was like, yeah, like an 10-point cage. It was aggressive. <laughs> but you can get so much value from driving a front-wheel drive car well, and it, whether it's in a track or in a canyon or whatever, Yes, you'll feel the difference even if you're not trying to drift a rear-wheel drive car, but there's plenty of other, there are plenty of other aspects to driving that you get from either platform. What do you think, though, about the concept of an Integra Type S as a one-car solution versus like having an NA or an NB or a Boxster or something like that as a cheap second you know, rear-wheel drive fun car? I, I think it, that, that really depends on someone's life. So do you have a garage? Where do you live? Do you yeah. want to have two cars? I, when I drove the Integra Type S, I've driven it twice now, I was sitting looking around going, do I, do I want to finance a car? What's happening to me? Like, I don't, yeah. I, I like that. Too. I was pretty impressed by it. I, was very I also think it looks really nice. I think much it nicer better. than the Honda. Yes, I agree. So it looks great. It has better lumbar support than the Honda. Yeah. It's exactly as fast, exactly yeah. the same hardware. It, I think it's a phenomenal car for a one car solution. If you're going to separate the two, then it's like, how much money do you have? Yeah, Where do you right. Live? What do you like? And then but you could pick up a 986 Boxster for six thousand. Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> All right. I mean, it won't be that fast, but... <laughs> right, it won't be that fast. That's pretty good. Okay, is that all? Are we done? Should that be it? Zach, thank you for coming and for gracing us with your presence and your cookie eating. I'm going to have me. Well, I really enjoy it. <laughs> I'm back. You look great. You look great. It was really fun. Kenan, thank you for existing with us. My pleasure. Everyone will be Happy back next exist. week. Does he ever to say nice things to you? <laughs> <laughs> no, this is the Doug's in my relationship, but. Oh, we're at a racetrack next week. Me and Kenan are going to... Yeah. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to take our cars to the racetrack. What are you doing there? I don't, I don't know. I don't know what I'm going to do. <laughs> no, sorry. Go ahead. What are you actually doing? We're going to the racetrack, and we're going to drive, and we're going to... You yeah, know what we're going to do? I have this... time on a racetrack ever. No, I have no, this no. Mercedes A-Class. You know that blue Mercedes over there? Yeah. Maybe? And we're going to all... Me and Kenan and a couple other people are going to all set times in it and yes. see who's the fastest. Yes. <laughs> oh, I love this idea. And probably by the end of it, the A-Class will be destroyed. We're going to try really hard not to roll it over. <laughs> We're going to try top really hard. Oh, that failed the moose test. I just watched a video about it did, that. It did <laughs> but mine has been updated with the newer traction control, and it's going to be fine. And okay. the track will be devoid of and just moose don't or mises or how, what are the plural? <laughs> there won't be any mises on the track. So we're That's be awesome. Right. Good for you guys. That'll be fun. All right. So we'll see you all in two weeks, and we'll have more uh, conversations. Sounds good. Goodbye, everyone. <laughs>